When you reach your 50s, each birthday becomes more and more significant. This year, I traveled to Barbados with eight of my girlfriends for my birthday week. We stayed at an exquisite villa called Aurora Lasso in the Sugar Hill community in St. James, Barbados. The villa was amazing with a private pool and a jacuzzi to die for. On the second night, we managed to pry ourselves away from the idyllic setting and ventured out to a local street party called The Cube. When we arrived around 9.30, it was totally turned up and so were we. They had music and food and dominoes and dancing and people, so many people. Now Barbados is a black country and the Q is a local party. A gathering of black people partying like this in the States would have included a very visible law enforcement presence. I was curious about how that would play out in Barbados. At the Q, there was a law enforcement presence as well. However, it was different in a very palatable way. There was no visible tension. The officers knew the community and the community knew the officers. It was a feeling of genuine connection I had only actually felt in the United States those first few weeks after 9-11. It felt good, very good. To me, this was policing how it is supposed to be, community-based. There was a mutual respect and a brand of camaraderie and community that piqued my curiosity and made me want to know how law enforcement worked in Barbados. My girlfriend, Tersa, was my co-conspirator and it was time to meet the officers at the queue. Meet Officer Farley. He is the officer in the middle. We introduced ourselves. They were a little guarded at first, however, they gradually warmed up to us, and I asked Officer Farley to tell me about the queue, and he did. He explained to me that he was a community police officer, and his role was to know, protect, serve, and reassure the people in the community. I really wanted to know what law enforcement in Barbados did to serve, protect, and reassure. Did the Royal Barbados Police Force with their neon yellow and blue vehicles know something we needed to know in America? I asked Officer Farley if any of the vendors at the queue sold fish cakes. He offered to walk with me and I was delighted. As we walked through the crowd, Officer Farley knew so many people by name. He said this was his beat and the queue moved around. However, the community police and the location worked that queue. He said he had known many of these people since they were in school. As a new recruit, he was assigned to a neighborhood where he knew no one. Officer Farley said, I didn't know how I was going to build a relationship to get my job done. He decided to take the first step. He went to the home of a woman who had lived there all her life and introduced himself, told her his role and offered his services. She in turn introduced him to her neighbors and that's how he broke the ice. Many communities have satellite police stations. This is the back of the main branch in Bridgetown. Officer Farley works at a satellite police station. He went on to tell me about the relationship the community police have with the schools. Law enforcement are not in the schools in Barbados to arrest the kids. They're there to build relationships. In Barbados, they start young. Many of the adults Officer Farley was talking to at the queue, he said he knew when they were in primary school. The community police know the principals, the teachers, the kids. If there's a dispute, they almost act as mediators. Note to American law enforcement, start young, be a positive presence. This is the summer camp initiative. The kids came to the police station on a field trip and the motorcycle police facilitated a fun day letting the kids mount their bikes during another ongoing community engagement initiative. No wonder they have this relationship. The kids are waiting patiently to sit high upon the Zoom Zoom machines. Here in America, recruitment for the police force is challenging. I mean, really, you have to be a special breed to sign up in the first place. We know that there are police whose hearts are in the right place, and then there are police who make everyone else look bad and suspect. Barbados is recruiting their next generation right here. Anxious to find out if this friendly association extended beyond the queue, the next night we went to Oyston's Famous Fish Fry. Cuckoo and flatfish is the national dish of Barbados, and nowhere do they cook more fresh seafood than the fishing hub of Oyston's. Meet Rennie. He is a vendor at Oyston's, and he explained to me there are different kinds of police in Barbados. The community police like Officer Farley, the detectives who investigate, and the task force that sound like they're similar, similar to our SWAT. Rennie said task force comes to do. However, they only come out for serious crimes like a shooting. Meet Anna. She spoke to the dynamic you have when there is an adversarial relationship between the police and the community. A proponent of community policing, she said here at Oyston's, you will only see community police, and the relationship was a good one. She told me to talk to Sergeant Bourne. So we went into the crowd of partygoers to find Sergeant Bourne. 
Once again, the strong ties with community were evident. It took me a minute to talk to Sergeant Bourne because her and another officer were dealing with a situation in the parking lot. Then the guy in the striped shirt comes up to introduce her to his fiance. I did get a few minutes, and to my surprise, Sergeant Bourne said to me, oh, you must be the girl doing the story about community policing. And oh yeah, Sergeant Bourne recruited the man in the striped shirt. He was a community police as well and had been on the force five years. Can you say succession planning? They are pretty much doing the same kinds of things in the Oystens area, and it's working. Yes, their footprint is smaller, and they don't have the racial issues that we do. However, community outreach works to serve, to protect, and to reassure by being present, building those relationships, and developing trust works. Seeing how it can be between law enforcement and the community brings me to you. What will happen to us as a society if we don't address the adversarial relationships that exist? I am connected to you and you are connected to me. Thank you, Barbados, for being a model and an inspiration. Thank you.